This Star Wars scene took me only one hour to program from scratch. I absolutely love to use the Bevy game engine and Rust and I'm reaching a point where building projects like this is becoming much easier to do and with a lot less effort. And today... Today we're gonna break down exactly how this code works, everything from how this laser works to... We're gonna take a look on this procedural world generation. And I will also break down this custom height map shader code, which is basically only four lines of code. They're cool, but let's start with the laser because they are the most baddest thing in the world. I want lasers to be able to spawn on specific parts of a 3D model. Even if it animates like the walker does, the laser should of course spawn where the guns are located. To achieve this I added some empty 3D objects using Blender. Yeah, I have no idea how this works. Some trial and error and it was actually easier than I thought. Now we have empty objects that goes with the animation. Now in our code we need to be able to identify where these laser objects are so we know where to spawn the lasers. And we're simply going to name this object laser and a random number. Let's jump into the code. This code spawns the X-Wing plane. Of course we have the plane movement here, which I won't dive into in this video so don't worry about that. We also have a scene bundle and this is how we load 3D models into Bevy. Now all we have to do is to spawn some guns so we know where to shoot our lasers. So to do that I'm also adding a special component here indicating that we want to spawn guns on this 3D model. If we head into the laser.rs file, here we can find the code that spawns our laser guns. This code simply finds all the entities with this awaiting spawn gun component. So using this entity we can then start looking through the hierarchy to find these laser mesh objects. So we take the root entity of the model, iterate all children and the child we get in this iteration are all of the shielded meshes of the 3D model. In Bevy there's a built-in component called name. We can use this to get the same name we set in the Blender model. So if it contains the word laser we want to spawn a gun. The gun is nothing fancy, we simply have a color for the laser and a timer that shoots in a randomized interval. If we go down to where we spawn the lasers, most code here is self-explanatory. If the time is right, we spawn a laser. Of course we shoot the laser in the direction that the empty blender object is pointing towards. Now you might wonder how the lasers look so juicy. Well the secret lies right here where we spawn the lasers. The laser is actually a very thin capsule mesh that I rotate to lie down horizontally. This quaternion lies the capsule down and then I have to set the rotation to point it to the velocity direction. Of course we also had the color from the gun component I showed previously, but the color we set of the material is actually the emissive color. Using emissive and having bloom enabled makes the laser shine, just how you would expect the laser to look like. Now if you look closely you might notice that the lasers seem to speed up as they go, making it look pretty cool. In the code that moves the lasers I actually increase the velocity exponentially, making them slow at the start but really fast the longer they live. Specifically this code makes the velocity 6 times faster every one second. Now if I didn't increase the velocity like this, it doesn't look as cool. I love how they zoom away. Before we demystify this landscape code, let's see how we fill this world with walkers and desert rocks. All the models I use in this product are from Sketchfab. You can find the source to these models in the GitHub repository. Fun fact number one. Bevy only supports the GLTF model format at the moment. Fun fact number two. The plane is actually not moving anywhere. It's the world that is moving around the plane. If I add a sphere at the origin of the scene, you'll see the plane hovering around 000. Now the reason I moved the world instead of the X-Wing is simple. It simplifies the world generation code massively. We don't need to think about chunk loading because we are well in the same chunk the whole time. The code that spawns all of these objects is it's actually pretty simple. Now in Bevy there's a thing called local. This allows me to here have a persistent floating point value that lives only in this Bevy system. I use this float as a timer and every one second we want to spawn an object in the world. Now as to deciding what to spawn, I thought I got a genius solution to implement this in code. I generate a random value between 0 and 100. I then match that value and if it's in the range of 0 to 70, we'll spawn a walker into the scene. 70% chance to spawn a walker. Of course the walker can also shoot lasers, so it has an awaiting spawn gun component. If the value between 0 and 100 is between 71 and 80, we will spawn a desert rock instead. Otherwise we'll spawn a desert cliff. It's a pretty unorthodox way of randomizing with specific percentage, but this is a small project and I thought it was an interesting way of using match. 
to decide where to spawn the walkers and decoration, I made a function to generate a random transform. Now we want everything to spawn at the edge of the world, and that's half the landscape size on the Z axis. Then to not make them spawn in a straight line, I randomized the X position. Now we don't want it to spawn in the middle of the scene, because they would eventually crash into the player plane, and we don't have collision for that, breaking our immersion. That is why I generate a value between a minimum distance away from the origin to how far away I want them to spawn. Then to make them spawn on both sides of the player, I simply have a value that I can multiply to flip the X. Of course, all the objects move, thanks to this tag we added, move with landscape. But before I explain how that works, we need to understand the amazing terrain shader. For this landscape, we can change the height, the scale, the UV scaling and speed. It's pretty cool. Now Bevy has a built-in PBR shader. This is the complete code for the standard Bevy material. Now that is a lot of scary shader code, but you see, I wanna use PBR for my landscape because then lighting effects like the sun or point lights that affects other 3D models will also affect the terrain. The PBR shader handles all of that, lighting, shadows, bloom, fog, etc. So I prepared a file where I stripped down the contents of this default PBR renderer. We don't need mesh skinning for example, delete that. In fact, there are so many rendering features my landscape shader won't even utilize, so after stripping down the default PBR shader, this is the final shader file only using PBR features I actually need. This is code I can work with easily. First I needed to pass in the settings I want to modify at runtime, things like time, terrain speed, size, height. Now Bevy can automatically send this data from Rust into the shader. The only thing I had to do was to update the time variable, because I had to change the time variable, <laughs> duh. To play with these values at runtime, I'm using a Bevy plugin called Bevy Inspector EGUI. To make the landscape, of course I use a mesh that is a big subdivided quad, so we can move the vertices in our shader. So let's jump into the shader. I want to use a noise map for the height. So I decided to import some noise functions from the internet. Now let me explain exactly how this works. Magic, it's magic. Luckily I don't need to know how this works under the hood, I just need to know how to use it. We pass in the 2D position and we get the noise value. Doesn't sound so bad, does it? So passing in the vertex X and Z position, we can get the height value. Because we can tweak the height value, we have to of course multiply with the terrain height. Now the noise value goes from minus 1 to 1, so I need to rescale it here so it goes from 0 to 1. Doing that alone will get us a static looking landscape. But if you remember, the plane stays at the origin and I move the landscape in our shader code. To do that, I simply offset where we sample the noise using the past in time multiplied with the speed. Surprisingly, that's all the shader code we need to shape the landscape with a vertex shader. Now coloring the landscape, however, is a bit trickier. Of course, we have a beautiful desert texture that I pass into the shader. Now if I were to just sample this texture at the vertex UV position, well, the texture would cover the entire landscape. We want to scale this down, and I can simply do that with the UV scaling variable I made in the material. Oh, and also, the landscape is moving, but not the texture rig. We also have to move the UV sampling position, so we add a offset variable just like how the vertex shader works, but the trick here is we are now working with UV space instead of world space. If we move one UV unit, we have moved the entire texture. So to convert this world space offset to UV space, we can simply divide the offset with the landscape size. The landscape size of course is in the material that I passed in previously. Now that is all the shader code. Not that bad, right? Bebe. Well, wait a minute. How does a walker and desert cliffs move with the landscape? Well, remember this component, move with landscape tag? For all the entities with this tag, all we do is we find the landscape material, fetch the speed of the landscape, and then we just take that delta and offset it. Pretty self-explanatory, so that's that. Now Bevy does not have a scene editor like Unity or Godot at the moment, where you can set graphic settings in the editor or spawn things using a scene instead of code. We gotta do all of that manually with Bevy, so a lot of the code in this project is just modifying some settings, spawning light sources, and the rest of this code I'm not gonna cover in this video, because most of it is self-explanatory. Of course you can watch me build this project from one hour from scratch, in the no commentary video I made. Now let me expose the secrets of the behind the scenes of making this whole project. Now the whole point of this project was to showcase some cool things you can build with Bevy in a short amount of time. Because I love working with Bevy and I want to see more people use it. Now, full transparency, I actually built this project over two days. First of all, I had to find all the assets to use and there were a lot of things I've never done in Bevy 
before like using bloom and fog that I had to learn how to do. Then of course I spent a lot of time just tweaking values to make everything look good. So I first built this project once and then I recorded it a second time rebuilding it from scratch. And that truly came down to one hour. I bet you wouldn't want to see me sit and tweak color values for one hour straight. So I don't think it's deceptive to make a project this way, especially considering I'm telling you about it. So that is some behind the scenes for you. A big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. We got a new tier 3 supporter, Drifio. Of course, we also have Afax, Alexander, David Klosterman, Garrett Stefan, Ledo, Racing, Sankwich, Terpsicora, Turbo Waffle. I'm actually moving soon into my own apartment, and your support is directly helping me, you know, pay rent, eat food so I can survive, so I can make these videos. Now you know where that money goes. See you soon, Tantanians.